physical life. <laughs> yeah, for life. <laughs> hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Flaffo, and for those who just turn in, Chris Andres. So let's just wait a few minutes. Maybe Andres, you you get our our viewers. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> the people start joining us. That sounds good. How's your day going so far? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I made my morning green juice, which is. I'm warming up to it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, but it's, it's a pretty good morning. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for being here. I think this is a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to be here. It's uh, you get a, a little glimpse into my childhood bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome! Yeah, I can. Yeah, so how, how how do you feel about your introduction? Oh, it was the most, it was the best introduction I've ever had. I think this is like the the peak of my whole mathematical career. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I am really glad you like it. I was trying to see how can I introduce Andres? What is it? And I remember for, for your background and maybe from seeing you before that yeah, Star Wars. I always see you with Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars. And I wear Star Wars every Friday, so. Oh, Friday. I, and today is Friday, so I think it's a. Okay, so it was actually excellent. I guess I shouldn't do that since it was perfect. <laughs> awesome. So, again, for those people who are just tuning in, this is welcome to Math Spaces. Math Spaces. This is a. This is a show in, the, in which we get to know people who are involved in math from a different angle. There's the other angle, so that's like. I don't want, I don't want us to just see of these general stereotypes that we have about math people. Instead, we're gonna get to know these wonderful people through a different size, through a different aspect of their life. So again, we have Andres Vindes, who is joining us for this interview. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think Andres is probably a little bit nervous. So maybe Andres, let's, let's, let's do this thing together. Let's take a... Let's take a deep breath. <laughs> yes. So just to Ready. have, us, yes, just to have us a little bit loosen up. You know, I maybe be kind of, yeah, like that going up. Maybe put your hands up. It's, yeah. it's, really, it's really hard. Yep. You know, yep. to do this. But we quarantine as keeping us maybe not active. So. Maybe I will drive in Easter eggs next week. We're gonna be fitness next in in our channel. So tune in also for next week. All right, Andres. Uh, now that we have the, the people joining, I uh, will also suggest people to write their comments that they, or in the comments below, write a question that they may have about that they may want to ask you uh, for the for the end round, right? After I would like the right questions, so you, they have a chance to ask you something. Either academic or not academic uh, about you. All right. PG thirteen, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me that. Yeah. All right, guys. So, Andres, this is a big question that I'm, I'm going to ask every participant. Okay. So, besides your mathematical career, who are you? Who am I? That's a that's that's actually a very difficult question. Who am I aside from my math career? Uh, let's see. I am the oldest of three. I, well, we're three, so I have two younger sisters. Um, so I'm a brother. I'm a son of uh, immigrant par parents. So they, they came here from Costa Rica. I am a Star Wars fanatic, as you can hopefully tell. Um, I also... I'm a Star, uh, Don Quixote fan. If you can't see some here, here, down there. Um, what else? Who am I? I think I'm. <laughs> I'm a pretty simple person. I think. <laughs> I don't know what else. What else to 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 say? Hopefully, somebody can ask the question. Cause yeah, I don't know what else. What else to say about myself right now? Of who I am? Um, yeah, I guess I'm a. 
I'm a mathematician, but I'm more than a mathematician. I am a person who likes to socialize. I'm a, I guess I'm a social person. Um, but hopefully that answered your first question. Uh, and let's see what else I can <laughs> reveal about myself. So you're a Star Wars fan. When, when was it that you start liking the Star Wars? Like, into what age or how, how do you became amazed with Star Wars? That's, a, that's actually a very nice question. So in 1997, when I was uh, about five years old, Star Wars released um, A New Hope, the special edition. And I was fascinated ever since. And then two years later, in 1999, Star Wars, uh, The Phantom Menace came out. And that was my generation of movies. I know there's probably a lot of criticism on uh, what the the prequels and how good they are and blah 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 but that was my generation like that was when i got into star wars and i think i like star wars because it's it really is a a it's it's a beautiful story where anybody can just chime in at any age and so the, star wars is for any generation um and I'm, I'm really fascinated and i started collecting as you can see with some of my toys and there's plenty more so um I started collecting this around 1997. So this has been just toys that I've been collecting ever since. Um, there's toys in here that are way older than me from 1977 and the 80s. In fact, this right here is a speakerphone. It's not connected to anything because we don't have a landline anymore, but, uh, but it's cool to have around. Yeah, so I really think that Star Wars is, is a story a saga for anybody um and i think anybody can enjoy it if they're open to it but uh but lucasfilm isn't paying me for uh for publicizing star wars <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe they can sponsor us eventually yeah hopefully <laughs> uh, okay just one more star wars question have you do you have you found any relation in your mathematical career with Star Wars? Have I found any? Some, connect some, something that connects you, your math career with Star Wars? I, I don't think directly. I think with imagery. So I draw a lot of pictures. And one thing that I'm actually very fascinated about in Star Wars is that there is there are these these books, well, people, people have to do these sketches uh, before the movies, and so they put them in books afterwards, and I'm fascinated with these books. And in the type of math that I do, I get to draw a lot of pictures, and so I feel like I'm always inspired by the pictures that are drawn, the geometric figures that are used in Star Wars. So in that sense, I guess there's that connection. But I've never actually explored the math behind Star Wars, which might be a good thing. I've, I've thought about the you know, the re religion behind Star Wars, the philosophy of Star Wars, but I've never actually thought about the math of Star Wars. And it's uh, maybe something to do now in this summer. That was a good question. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing that. So now let's follow up with it for sometimes we call it the natural for people because we're trying to cater, cater everybody, right? For everybody who at the different skill levels of math. So let's go deep a little bit into math and say, what is that you do in your academia? I, right now, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Kentucky, and I work in algebraic and geometric combinatorics. And so those are kind of, uh, you know, jargony words for thinking about ways of counting and the properties that characterize these ways of counting. And so I use tools in algebra and geometry, so a lot of uh, pictures and shapes to, um, and to tell me about some counting properties. And so um, there are these things called polytopes, which are higher dimensional uh, polygons. And so in three dimensions, we can have, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the Archimedean solids or the Platonic solids, um, and we can count their number of uh, faces and so the edges and the vertices and things like this. And so I spend a lot of my time thinking about how to count to different things uh, that are coming from geometric and algebraic objects. I think that's a 
somewhat simplified version of what I do. <laughs> awesome, nice. Okay. Now, now, so what? How do we apply these 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 in real life? Any uh, yeah, any applications of your work in real life? Yeah. So I, I have to be honest. I don't. I myself don't think about the applications, but there are certainly applications to the work that I do. And so some of this is, for example, in voting theory. So um, next semester, I'm actually taking a class on discrete mathematics and how it connects to social choice theory and voting theory. Um, there are some applications to my work that I, that I do in crystallography, so the study of crystals and their geometric property. Um, I, I don't know if some of you might have seen recently in the past year or two that they discovered these, um, I think they're enzymes that have some geometric properties. And so these, these, there are applications of uh, geometry to, uh, to the real world. Um, and so something as simple, I mean, keeping, keeping track of, of how populations grow and things like this. I mean, we've seen recently with, with the, the pandemic, how, um, Math, mathematicians are supporting um, other scientists with, with their math. And it'd be nice to explore how the geometry comes from, from these real life problems. Awesome, thank you, thank you for sharing this because uh, I, I don't know sometimes how to, we can apply the geometry and now I'm learning, I'm learning about that all of these uh, applications in real life that we can, we can have and also our public can, can learn more about this how geometry interacts in our real world. Right, I mean, and, and optimization problems, right? Like when we think about how to optimize uh, sales or transportation or things like this, there's always some underlying polytope hidden. Um, and when you can, you, can, you can think about it kind of geometrically or analytically, but, but there's always a, a hidden polytope. Awesome, thank you. Okay, now let's maybe do this lightning question round in which you have two minutes and to answer the most questions that, that you can. Okay, <laughs> let's okay. do that. So, all right, so I'm going to start the timer. Um, Good. And you have, you're going to have two minutes to, to do this. Okay, so we start now. Texting or talking? Texting. <laughs> Favorite day of the week? Monday. Favorite city in the U.S. besides the one you live in? San Francisco. Nickname your parents used to call you? Tito or Free. Last song you downloaded? Oh, shit. I didn't download. I streamed. <laughs> Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to the animals? Oh, shit. Um animals favorite holiday thanksgiving how long, <laughs> how long does it take you to get ready 30 minutes a scale of one to ten how good of a driver are you from one to ten i think i'm a negative number i'm a horrible driver all right fill in the blank taylor swift is white uh, at what age do you want to retire 55 Invisibility or super strength? Invisibility. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? Yes. It's a scale of one to 10. How good are you at keeping secrets? Oh, I'm a gossip, I can't. <laughs> Ariel or Jasmine? Jasmine. First celebrity crush? Oh shit. I don't think I have one, I don't keep up. Dawn or dusk? Done. If you could travel back in time, what period will it would you go to? The seventies or the eighties. The music was popping back then. Do you snore? No. Place you most want to travel? Oh uh, shoot, I don't know. Uh, Thailand. Favorite junk food? Hamburgers. Favorite child TV show? Okay, time's up. <laughs> I was All too right. slow. I was too slow. <laughs> okay, you managed to go to round two. I think 
Okay, same as same as Viviana. So maybe the next speaker can can go higher. We'll see. All right. So now, thank you for sharing all of these fun facts about you. Let's have let's have a few minutes to for the for the audience. So they have a few questions here. So one of the first question is, um, what got you fascinated or interested in math? Mike Och Och Ocho is asking. What got me fascinated in math? Well, I mean, I think math for me was my like get away from everything. When I was in school, I was very bad at English. Um, and so reading and all these things were were not my thing. So I think that to use less of my English abilities, I I not I you know, I was drawn into math. But what really got me into math was my middle school and high school math teachers. So I have to say that all my middle school and math teachers were um, Black or Latinx. And so I, I saw myself teaching mathematics to students and, and really motivating students to pursue higher education through mathematics. And so I think I owe a, a lot to them. And because of them, that's why I feel like I can still be in math. Nice. Okay, let's let's keep answering the, the audience question. So we have Kaleen. She asks, do you play any games, console or, or otherwise? I don't. I'm I'm really bad at video games actually. The last game that I think I actually finished aside from like po some Pokemon games was uh Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64 a long time ago. So that was the last game I think I touched. Wow, that's <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah. But uh, Viviana is asking, where did the curls go? Where did my curls go? Yeah, so this is uh, definitely definitely a pandemic uh, move. I asked my my youngest sister to cut a little bit of my hair. And then after a while, I, I felt it was too short. And I was like, no, Sarah, let's just, let's just go all in, take it all off. And so it's actually growing really quick because <laughs> they're much, much shorter. And so, so they're all gone. I used to have really long hair, by the way, for those that, that didn't know. Katie asked the following. What do you like about studying combo? <laughs> like eating combo or? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or any, what mean? I'll choose any combo. Oh man, uh, for, I have to be honest, I don't really like the word combo. Um, and, and it's not that difficult to say combinatorics, uh, but why do I like it? Well, part of it is because it allows me to draw and to to think about different ways of solving a problem. Um, I think also, I, I have to say that the, the area in mathematics that I work with in you know, discrete mathematics, I was a very, I took discrete mathematics three times in undergrad before I learned to appreciate it. Um, and it was because of, of my mentors that I felt like I could do it. And, um, and I owe a lot of them that to them too so it's because of people believing me that i can do something and their area happened to be in combinatorics and so i i kind of you know was was drawn to that also so i really owe owe it to people who have been my mentors to being interested in combinatorics i don't know if that answered the question but i'm gonna say it did <laughs> <laughs> noah says is zero a natural number uh is zero a natural number this is a uh, controversial. I'm gonna say yes when it's convenient to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Favorite math conference, Ortiz Ale asks. Yeah, Ale asks the following favorite math conference. My favorite math conference has to be um, the Society for Advancements of Chicano, Hispanics, and Native American Science National Conference. So the SACNAS conference which this year, if, if it is hosted, will be um, here in near my hometown of, in California. So it's gonna be in Long Beach. Thank you, Andres, for answering all of our audience questions. I don't wanna keep you longer. Uh, <laughs> we've been uh, going over the time. I, I know you have a busy schedule as well, even though with this quarantine. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you for having you. Next week, we're going to have Maria from, from Puerto Rico, and it's going to be in a special edition. We're going to have a Spanish uh, live show. So, 
vamos a estar entrevistándola en español para nuestro público hispanohablante. Okay? O si quieren practicar su español, you can come over and practice your Spanish. Yeah, okay. or if, if you don't speak Spanish, maybe you should sit through a Spanish, uh, a Spanish talk uh, just, just for kicks and giggles, you know. People, yeah. people in other languages have to sit through English uh, talks all the time. Awesome. Thank you, Andres. Thank you for having you, having you here in our show. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Everybody. Bye-bye.